Alright, alrighty, this is Precision TV. My name is Desiree. I am here with my friend Jado. How you doing, man? I'm pretty good. Desiree, how are you doing today, bro? Very good, very good, very good. Good, good, good. It's another day, another week. We are here uh, again to uh, tell you about immigration. Jado, what do we have today? Basically, today we're going to talk about getting selected before we talk about selection though we have to talk about how to apply for the green card what happens when you get selected yeah basically we are going to talk about uh being an immigrant here in the u.s uh, holding a green card and you came in here as a green card holder what is the process what happened what all those little step that you guys took until you get here to us uh, today this is what we are going to discuss and see exactly if anybody want to try and see if we can get here to us i think you are welcome to follow the show if you haven't subscribed yet i will say go ahead and subscribe so that you can subscribe button and you like the video as well mm -hmm, why mm -hmm. not that's right All right, again, this is Precision TV. Like I told you, we are going to talk about green card holder who live here in the U.S. Uh, we are going to see exactly how did they get here. I know we are going to see uh, the uh, the whole process, but the next time we we'll be talking about any other type of immigrant. So yeah. today we are talking about green card holder who just came from nowhere and mm -hmm. get to U.S. with a green card. I know everybody knows about the green card lawfully. Of course, um, and we get here through green cards or through different processes of uh, um, Im immigration statuses. But mm -hmm. I think as of today, we're talking about the green card. Exactly. Jado, uh, you are part of those who came here uh, through Green Card as well. Uh, that means you know exactly all the steps. So that's why we're here. Uh, and I think you're going to be able to explain or to tell uh, all those who are willing to apply, all those who are already submitted their application, all the process from 1 to 10. I think there are seven process to get through this and get your visa and you fly to US. So, Jado, uh, I know it might be a long, uh, maybe a long story to definitely, maybe to, exp definitely. to explain step but by step. It's a long story broken into steps. You know? uh -huh, exactly. So, we are going to start with a step number one. Step number one. What, what is uh, specifically step number one? Uh, basically, uh, DV lottery or oh, the government of the U.S. every year has what they call a fiscal year that allows people to apply mm -hmm. for green cards for free of charge. So it's a random, it's a random. Uh, oh, so process. basically, the application application is free. It's free of charge. Mm -hmm. You just have to know when to apply, and then you apply. The requirements to apply, nothing else mm -hmm. apart from your passport and your names. That's it. And your ID, your name, or you mean your the ID? Uh, of course, goes with your passport because your name okay. should your, your name's age should match what is written in the in your passport. Okay, so basically, you just need your passport to to apply. You don't need your identification card. Nothing, you, because back in the days we used to use the identification cards, mm -hmm. but now things have changed. Okay, since twenty eighteen, people have started applying using their passports. Great. So you, that's number one. You go to the website and then you follow the steps. Then you submit your application. And then what happened after you submit? After submitting your applications, you're going to get what they call a confirmation number. Uh, number or confirmation code that mm -hmm. you have already applied. So the only thing is just the code and your full names. So you have to print that out and then you keep it somewhere safe. Good, good. So don't have that confirmation code and throw it away or just give it to your baby. It's extremely important. You have to keep it somewhere safe. Mm -hmm. That's a step number one. If you are here, please follow one by one. I think next time if your friend want to do it, I think you will be able to explain uh, him. Step number two, it will be selection of applicant. Uh, what's going on here? 
So what's going on here? Of course, uh, maybe the systems in the uh, in the uh, USCIS uh, developmentary processes or the system has to run uh, random numbers, uh-huh. and then they have to announce the results in May. Okay. Every year in May, that's when they announce the results. So, so ba- basically, since we are in April, <laughs> yeah, next something month is will be <laughs> some, something is coming up. Something is coming up. Wow. So what happens? Then they are not going to send you an email. Mm-hmm. They are not going to contact you. Okay, you have to stay a lot. You have to be, be aware. aware of the informations. Mm. So every every year in May. Mm-hmm. The first two weeks between the second and the third week, that's okay. when they're going to release the date. So you have to check using the code that you have saved. You have saved before and your names, of course. Okay. And you have to go back to the same website same to check website your status. To check your, your status. Now you're not applying, you're checking your status. Mm-hmm. So basically, as you said, um, uh, you go to the website as a new applicant instead of. Uh, maybe stating that you are a new applicant, you're going to tell them that you are checking your status. Definitely, that's what you're going to do because they just ask you like three or four questions. Mm -hmm. It's about your names, your confirmation code, date of birth, and just uh, uh, to confirm with the uh, with the characters, then you submit. Great. So, and uh, that's a, a selection of the applicant. Uh, once you are uh, logged in, and uh, w- w- what do you see w- w- after uh, w- when you are checking? Yes. Okay. So, step number five. It says submit your immigration visa and uh, alien registration application. So now they are talking about the form DS two sixty. So that is the form you have to fill out once you get selected. Very important, right? It's a very important information. So before you fill it out, mm-hmm. you need a couple of things. You need your passport. Okay. You need uh, uh, the criminal record from the Ministry of Justice. So that's number two? Yes, you need a police clearance. Uh-huh, number three. And um, your high school diploma. Number five, number four. And also birth certificate if you're single. Wow, birth certificate. Yes. And if you're married? If you're married, you need a marriage certificate. Oh, okay, okay, yes. okay. And also, on top of that, you, you also need a birth certificate as well. Because Even though you are married, yes. you guys have to uh, yes, provide they, those. you have to provide those. But the reason to why you need this to fill out the form is because once you have those forms, the information, mm-hmm. the age, date of birth, uh, full names, they'll, they'll be matching all those documents before you fill out the form. So the form basically it will be used against you during the interview. Mm-hmm. So they're just balancing the informations and how do they match. Okay, so basically they are, they are trying to see if what you said in your application or what you are saying in application have to match maybe for further or next step, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay, so make sure you are putting something that you already have, something that you're going to find, something that you will assure that you will find it. Exactly. Don't don't just make up something. Yeah, because it also helps people because some people, they rush to, into like, you know, filling DS-260, submitting it, then they go to check papers, bef- uh, I mean, after, after. submitting it. Oh, man. You can still request to edit your DS-260, but it's going to take two weeks before that is the earliest they could mm. reply back, but it's going to take time before you make some changes. That's not so good. there, what happens is they encourage people to first look for their documents mm-hmm. before they fill the form. All right. I, I want to remind you, all this information that we are using here, you can find it as well on Diversity Visa Program. This is um, a web page that uh, is provided for everybody who want to apply, everybody who want to know exactly exactly how things goes so if you are anywhere you want to uh, process uh, your application you want probably to check out you want to know what's going on the next step and everything that's why we're here we are here to tell you to share with you already Jado have been through this he already know this uh, he have been granted a green card through this way that's why he's helping us to uh, make sure that if you're following us Please share this video. Maybe it might help someone else, right? Definitely, because people, 
uh, some people that even get selected and then they not even know mm-hmm. if and then they just let things go away and then they just their chances just flips off their hands because they are not like they forget maybe they get discouraged they don't get they don't get like a real source of information they don't mm-hmm. listen maybe to podcasts like these ones mm-hmm. so of course you need to share this to people cuz it might help someone else so shadow uh before we go to uh, step number 6 uh what are basically the overview of uh, the step number 5 uh, or the ds uh, 260 uh what what are uh, like a short um like overview of this application people might at least know what's going on even though we are not looking at it probably yeah. going one by one but you already uh, applied it you already know how it looks like yeah. uh, people might be interested to know exactly what uh, what the basic information what the basic document do they need to make sure that they are doing the right thing so basically uh when you're filling out this uh this ds26 on this kind of step mm-hmm. so y- we need to talk about let's say uh two different individuals right here mm-hmm. even the third person i would talk about on behalf of single people okay they married and divorced or separate okay so the the thing is for the single person i think it's easy because you need five or six documents the documents we said you need to have before you fill yes, out the form yes yes those documents when you have them that will help you fill out this form with without any problem that's that's good that's for single for single person mm-hmm. but if you're married okay that means the documents you're going to have like to look for yourself mm-hmm. also your family needs to get them okay because let's say you 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 will need a uh, you need a birth certificate for your child you, you a- need any child on our list yes you will need your uh, marriage certificate mm-hmm. to your wife same thing on a wife okay yes. so now this where like this is why you have to fill out all the information from on behalf of your family and you yourself oh, who's going to okay. be interviewed so basically anything that they're asking you it's going to be similar to anyone on your list exactly okay so just let, let, let's let's be clear here make sure you have everything Uh, from your family member that you want to put on your case or if you are single that's simple that's only you and uh, or how about when you're divorced uh, probably you have kids you're not going to go with that's your the, that's the real case now that's where the the real issue comes uh, most of the times uh, in Africa because uh, when you go into like you know when you want you want to try uh, to legally divorce or separate your your partner mm-hmm. it involves a wealth of finances and everything so some people they don't do it but they just try to fix it between themselves and mm-hmm. then they do a, just an illegal separation right they, they just do it without a proof yeah without proof or just like you say you know what just like to ease things out let's just you take the baby i'll be trying to provide a hustle here and then then it provides some few mm-hmm. you know some few like oh little money just to support yeah the, yeah the yeah, kid. yeah and then the, they don't do it like through paperwork through legal um system uh, systems mm-hmm. so now that's where the, il- the the big issue comes because now you need your your husband or your ex-husband or your ex-wife to sign on the documents and these okay and these are the documents you sign in front of the lawyer as a witness or mm. uh, at the district officer let's say just in the okay. government set so basically you need a notary to sign on those documents yeah s- things like that so now at this point I know some people who have just like you know get rid of everything and then they just they couldn't fly because it's a wife he cannot she cannot fly without the baby that's because right. just the husband he doesn't care the the husband doesn't even take this thing serious he doesn't mm. feel like the wife and the boy or the kid could fly to the US okay. live there it's like I'm busy working those are scams and whatever you know don't waste my time all these things okay that's what happens so so basically if you know that you are separate try sure, to educate your yeah, partner exactly of the make time. sure you have legal documents that are going to support 
Mm-hmm. Your case. The, your case of divorce or separation. All right. And uh, this is applied to anybody. If you are in a, a, in, in Asia, Australia, uh, Europe, Africa, or Middle East, or anywhere you want, uh, this applies to anyone. It's not only uh, for some countries. It's for everyone. So, Jado, let's go ahead and go to step six uh, because uh, now we have already uh, submitted our DV or DV, uh, I mean, D, DVS yeah, DS- to 60 for me, yes. uh, or maybe a visa just yeah, in a short word we, we are done with the our visa now we are waiting or, pro, or probably we approved let, let's go to some um to supporting document submit the supporting document these supporting documents are uh, submission does it come what why now we are going to submit this uh supporting so, document uh, definitely uh, this is what happens uh, after you fill out your form and you submit it mm-hmm. so that now this means like you've got all the papers together mm-hmm. so the the uh the uh, kcc which is a uh, kentucky uh consular uh where they take care of this yes, yes. application no, the sorry. office yeah they send you an email specifically for communication mm-hmm. and sending your files. That's right. So this is the email where you are going to upload your scanned documents mm-hmm. and then you send them over. So you have to do this right after submitting your document. I mean your DS-260 form actually. All right. Uh, that, it makes sense because if they're talking about the supporting document, that means you have to make sure you are giving the proof of what you have said in your application exactly right? it's like you it's a copy of your passport copy or a copy of your uh, your diploma your degree or mm-hmm. if you have a master's anything, who knows yes. your birth certificate your marriage certificate so your, basically anything that you know justice yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah the, the criminal records from the ministry of justice okay. police clearance form that's it. So, Shadow, uh, when it comes to the document, I always tend to ask myself, uh, many countries doesn't use English, yeah. and we know that America or U.S. use always English in their um, legal uh, legal, uh, legal way. Uh, so, what happens if my country speaks uh, probably uh, so French y- or Arabic y- or y- maybe Swahili? You do translation, and then you get that notarized. Mm-hmm. So they are translated by a notary officer, and okay. then he or she notarizes them, okay. and that person should be legally probably known in your country. Of course, people of course. they recommend some specific people actually, but that's the process. You have to make mm-hmm. it trans- to get it translated, and then not uh, and then submit it. Okay, yeah. okay. I-, I was just trying to make sure that yeah. if you have those document, uh, it's in your language. Make sure you translate them. Make sure you have um, a professional translator who's going to do it and then go to the notary, public notary somewhere uh, Mm -hmm. in your country, then uh, submit your document. Yeah, exactly. Because every time you feel like you're going to get stuck with the information or with the requirements, Mm -hmm. just look up on the website Mm -hmm. or find someone with the information. For instance, the website will just tell you, hey, do this and that and that. Mm-hmm. But s- some internal informations, you may not find them there. Okay. So okay. And try to stay also in touch. Once you can't find the document, you have to send the email, mm-hmm. the email they provided for communication. Okay. Send them a note. Send them an email. I'm stuck on this document. How can I follow up? How can I move forward? And if they don't reply back, you will print that information. You will print out... Um, that email due on the day of the interview to go and just prove, hey, this is what I asked you guys. I couldn't receive any uh, any response or nobody replied me. So mm-hmm. now I was stuck, but I'm here for the interview. No one is going to blame me for that. Okay, okay. So basically, make sure you are communicate. 
communication is the key. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Uh, this is what uh, we are talking right now, but uh, it's going to be part one. Part two, it's coming. We will be talking about step seven, step eight, sp- uh, step nine, and step ten. Jado, what do we have on step seven? I, I know we are we are going to talk in a part two, yeah. but if you are following us right now, you might be like, oh, do they going to stop here? Uh, step Step seven all the way to ten will be on our uh, uh, part course, two yeah, of this uh, show. The part of this show we're gonna talk about step seven, which is gonna be the interview and how to prepare for the interview. Mm-hmm. Um, how does the applicant get interviewed? And um, step what nine. happens after the interview? Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are all the steps throughout the process. Okay, so interview, prepare for the interview applicant interview and after the interview exactly so stay tuned stay right. tuned for this uh next uh part of this show uh, of course it's uh, episode number two of redemption uh immigration redemption uh, and i want you to stay tuned <laughs>